Hey, thanks for checking out this podcast. Our hope is that it's an encouragement to you, that it builds your faith, that it helps you be a better leader and a better influencer in and through your life. If this is helpful to you, we'd love you to subscribe and also share it with somebody else to encourage them too. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, welcome to the Victory Church podcast. Uh, we're so happy to have you guys join in, listen in today. Um, today we're going to be talking about a, a topic that is uh, very important to me, and I know that this conversation is going to lead to a lot of help for anyone struggling with it, and if you haven't, you may. It's cynicism. Cynicism. How not to stay cynical in your Christian walk. Wow. An open discussion um, between one former cynic slash struggling <laughs> not struggling. to be cynical Yes. Um, with a man who, at least from what my purview is, is a rather hopeful man most days, and I'm sure you've struggled with this topic too, so... Yep. I'm excited for us to dance through this topic and to yep. learn some things from one another, especially learn from you. So Yeah, well, I'm excited too and just excited to be here and excited for our, our listeners, viewers yeah. to enjoy this. And I, I'm praying, actually, we just prayed before mm-hmm. we started r- recording here yeah. that uh, God would speak and that the Holy Spirit would move on, on hearts and lives. And I know, I know my own heart can easily grow uh, brittle, right? Yeah, yeah. Hard. And mm. uh, so it, it is a work of the Holy Spirit that we're, we're going to be treading in, in yeah. water into here today. So, mm-hmm. all right. So I want to define cynicism first. Okay. And then I want to talk about how someone might become cynical. I think that's a great start. Sure. Is yep. How does one get there? Yep. Um, so good old, you know, Google def- definition says, um, that cynicism is an inclination to believe that people are motivated purely by self-interest or hmm. being skeptical okay. of people, of outcomes. Um, also, one extended definition says um, the belief that people act selfishly. Um, a, you know, to be cynical about something is to have the belief that it cannot be successful, whatever it is, yep. um, or that people involved are not honorable. So hmm. uh, a grim outlook on life. Wow. Wow. Um, that is devoid of real hope. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that most people who've been following Jesus for a while have at least struggled with cynicism or at least with um, a more bleak outlook on life. I know especially my um, people my age yep. uh, are wrestling with a lot of this right now. Yep. Um, yeah, this idea that bad things keep happening and you just reach a stage for a season or a day or however long it is where you just feel like there's no way hope could arise out of this. Right. And I know that's an extreme way to put it, um, but it's, yeah. So if that's what cynicism is, is this bleak outlook, how does one get there? Yeah. Let me, let me just say a couple of things as you were yeah, talking yeah, yeah. there, a couple of things that came to my mind. Uh, one is I think of a scripture in Revelation, Jesus talking to the church where he says, you've, you've left your first love. Hmm. And uh, there's something in that concept. There's a, there's a nuance there that Jesus is, is kind of inviting the church back to a, a soft heart again. Hmm. And he says, you know, remember from whence you have fallen. And it's just such an interesting term. You've fallen. Falling is uh, not something you intentionally do. Right. It's not something you sort of choose. Nobody chooses to trip. Yep. Yep. <laughs> right? It's an accidental thing. Yeah. And falling sort of happens all by itself. I think cynicism is that way. Mm-hmm. I think it happens by itself. I think our hearts, uh, you know, we have a couple of bad experiences, yep. uh, m- expectations that don't come the way we would like. Right. Um, so that, anyway, that, just that scripture and that concept is coming to mind as we're talking, trying to Holy. define cynicism and, and see how it works its way mm-hmm. into our hearts. The other thing that I think is good to, to think about is Often our youth is defined by an idealism. Idealism. Whew. So in our youth, yeah. in our childhood maybe, and into our teen years, early teen years, we have this kind of idealism about life. This is how life works. This is how life should work. Yeah. You know, this sort of wide-eyed anticipation and excitement about life. Yeah. And then uh, so life t- tends to sort of hit us with, Disappointments, yeah. you know, yeah. things that don't work out that way, and and it sort of steals the light out of our eyes, the brightness, mm. um, the twinkle uh, uh, from our from our eyes. So yeah. young adult years are often marked by growing cynicism. 
Mm. Um, because just that idealism sort of gets shot down through our young adult years. And there's right. sort of our young adult years are kind of marked by it ought not to be that way. You know, protests is kind of mark young adults. If you look yeah. back over the generations, mm -hmm. um, you know, back to the, the whatever, the 70s and things like this. Right. So mm. anyway, those are just some comments I have to, to get, us, get us thinking and start. Oh, man. So many good things you said there. Um, I love what you said about how idealism when idealism fades, hmm. uh, what often takes its place yes. is cynicism. Right. Um, and neither of which are the destination. Right. Um, you know, God calls us to childlike faith. Yes. Um, I think there's something really beautiful about having a childlike faith. Yep. And I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm open to being wrong, but um, I think it is on the other side of idealism. Yes. That it's realism. <laughs> realism is a good yeah. way to say it. And, or or a, a, an idealism that has gone through the battle, the trial. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's based on reality. Totally. Um, not that's based on fantasy. Totally. So, yeah, the initial idealism is probably just immaturity. Yeah. <laughs> it needs yeah. to uh, have some hard knocks. Um, My... Yeah. Man, my best, like, if I were to talk about idealism or um, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, yep. right? Yep. I actually think of, um, if I was going to give an analogy, I would think of the disciples at the beginning of John. Hmm. Yep. They're all excited. There's this Jesus. He's doing miracles. Right. And if you were to ask them, is God good? They're going to say, God is good. Yeah. And then they go through all of these events that are challenging. Um, right. You know, you look at thousands of people walk away from Jesus. The officials are chasing him down. There's hardship. Uh, there's opposition from the government and the disciples yeah. and Jesus are, are going through this narrative. And at the end, yeah. their Messiah, their best friend is killed. Right. right. And it's this horrific moment, an event. And then there's this sweet moment at the end where Jesus goes to the disciples and eats breakfast with them in the aftermath. Of after he's things. resurrected. After he's resurrected, yes. yeah. In the and aftermath. restores hope. Restores, restores hope. Life again. Yeah. But a, but a, a life on the other side of the cross. Exactly. Resurrection that's there. Yeah. Um, because resurrection before the cross is is almost put on. It's yeah. It's sort of made up, and and maybe it hasn't. It's hasn't been realized yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some uh, false hopes. You yeah. know, the disciples were so excited. I think to realize the kingdom. Mm -hmm. to, to see the inauguration of, of the kingdom of God, yeah. to see the Bring Romans the defeated and yep. the people of God raised up and all that. things. They were excited things. about a physical palace <laughs> hmm. of, of, you know, God's people. Um, and but there in was, the end, what they got was a fish at a fire with the Messiah <laughs> who was raised from the dead. Th their initial idealism was probably more marked by selfishness hmm. than they would have liked to have admitted or even known wow. at the time. They probably wouldn't have even realized it yeah. or known it. But uh, it was probably m more that way than, than they knew. Yeah, and if you were asked someone at the beginning of John, is God good? They'll say yes. And if you ask someone at the end of John, is hmm. God good? They would say yes. Yes. And yes. it has the brevity to it of Bre yeah, of some like, rawness to it, some yeah. pain, and yet beauty, and you know it's real. Yeah, you know it's true. Yeah, and I think cynicism is not living into that reality of the resurrection. Of uh, the world is cold, people get hurt. Um, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. <laughs> I think of, is it Peter? He goes I back to his nets. Who, yeah, after Jesus dies. Yeah. And uh, there's really nothing left, right? There's no yeah. hope. And it's just, I'm going fishing. Mm. <laughs> I just think, oh. Oof. A lot of cynicism there. And I think how we get there, um, mm. I've got some ideas on this. So how do you get to become cynical? So if you are thinking, man, I'm in a good spot right now. I don't want to be, the, I don't want to go there. Um, and if you are cynical right now, if you, if you feel that way, if you resonate with what we're talking about, um, ask yourself, is this true about how I've been handling these situations? Um, the story we tell ourselves about events in our lives yeah. will determine how we live our life after. Hmm. So, you know, I love, I love uh, two people can go through the same experience and one can see God and the other one can right. be angry at God right. in the midst of it. Um, I have a, 
a friend of mine back in California in the church I went to. He was maybe 13 or 14 when I met him. I was just graduating high school and um, this kid had a rougher upbringing. His brother had passed away. Um, rough life. Yep. Um, our youth pastor really took him under his wing and uh, the guy started following Jesus and it was one of these like wow moments because mm. you see this guy transforming. Yep. Um, and a couple weeks ago I you know, we, I heard that he, he had stage four cancer. Mm. So he's like 19. Wow. And uh, man, it's... It's tragic. It is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've been reading his testimonies and mm. I've been reading the things he's been saying since being diagnosed. Yeah. And um, this guy loves Jesus so much. And this event in his life um, and knowing it's going to go yeah. has led him to wanting to share the gospel even more. Like he's found a hope Right. And he wants to share it. And, right. Um, you know, he's been given something worth dying for. Dying, you know, right. until the day I die, I'm going I'm right. to Right. He, he wants to this. suffer well. Is yeah. the way I think of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's telling a story about something horrific in his life. Yeah. And he's telling a story and, like, I want to, till the day I die, talk about this. Yeah. Whereas someone weaker, like me maybe, <laughs> mm. um, might not tell such a hopeful story. Yeah. With an event happening. And, and, and I, I should just add the caveat. Mm -hmm. Wants to be healed. Wants to be longs healed. Longs to be healed. Longs to live longer. Absolutely. But also knows mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, if it's a week or a month or a year yep. or a hundred years, mm -hmm. I'm going to die. Yeah. And uh, I want to engage whatever days I have mm -hmm. uh, well and whatever suffering I have. Right. In, a, in a way that's glorifying to God mm. and so on. What a response, right? Totally. Because again, you, you hear news like that mm -hmm. and you can sort of think, well, I've got it worse off than the next guy. And you can allow cynicism, bitterness, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call that piece, yeah. to work its way into your heart. And he's mm -hmm. chosen a different path. Yeah. Because of the story he's told? Because of the story he's told. And that's a really uh, extreme example. I think that's a really sure. big example. Yeah. Um, but in little things in your life, I didn't get accepted to this college. I, right. um, you know, lost a loved one or, you know, bad things keep happening. Right. I lost my keys. I lost my keys. So frustrating. Yeah. And I, I can just get so consumed, upset, mm -hmm. and, and it can spiral me into a negative. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I keep trying to work on this life discipline of mine yeah, and yeah. it's not working. Like, I it's still can't get a hold of this. Mm. I don't know what's going on. Or And the other people, right? Yeah. So-and-so in my life is not... Drama. Treating me the way I'd yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, yep. When we face situations, um, we can tell ourselves a negative story about it, or we can tell ourselves a realistic story about it, yeah. a hope-filled story about it. Um, and eventually what we do is when bad things happen. Oftentimes you won't even go straight to the negative. You won't tell a story at all. You'll just mm. keep going. So you'll distract. Yes. That's where we watch, you know, we binge Netflix, we right. go on to social media, we don't really talk about it too much. Hmm. Um, we relegate ourselves to being entertained um, and distraction. Um, so to protect ourselves from feeling the detriment of, you know, bad things happen, bad things happening. So we close ourselves off. Interesting. So actually not allowing ourselves to experience sorrow yeah. or grief mm -hmm. or even complaint to some degree, like you would yeah. read in the Psalms, like mm -hmm. the Psalmist complaints, um, can actually cause us, we might think we're actually uh, bypassing cynicism by doing that, right? but in some ways we're, we're not experiencing the valleys mm -hmm. properly and therefore not going to be able to come out of them mm. in healthy ways. So a hopeful person grieves, is yes. how I would put it, and it's a counterintuitive thing. It's totally. So, Blessed are those who mourn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So strange, but... And so, yeah, I th yeah a cynicism is a... Is a you're relegating yourself to not experiencing something. Hmm. Um, and you usually tell yourself a negative story about that bad thing happening. Okay. Yeah, so you say, yeah. I don't need to worry about this. Bad things happen all the time. Yeah, uh, there's two things happening there, yeah. but I, I can see them both. C.S. Lewis has a great quote about uh, if you don't want to be hurt, yeah. then just wrap up your heart in, in uh, you know, carefulness and safety yeah. and never take any risks of loving anyone. You know, don't even yeah. love your pet, right? right. Don't, don't love anything or anyone. And mm. there you won't experience hurt, but he says you'll never experience love. Exactly. And you'll be alone and cold. Exactly. Right? That's, exactly. That's, I mean, that's a scary 
fit but thought. that's that's the truth i mean yeah. i i know for myself um i struggled with burnout um hmm. june of last year in 2020 yeah and uh first three months of the pandemic i hmm. through the whole thing i think i was trying to distract myself right I, none of it i didn't let any of it sink in i was just i need to be a good soldier i need to yeah. march on ahead keep the people together i was so focused on the task yeah um that I wasn't grieving this big change. Yep. Um, and I didn't allow myself to struggle with it. I know a lot of people did. And yeah. I thought, I need to be stronger. Sure. And so I closed myself off, which yeah. led to me also not experiencing good things. Yeah. And not even processing. Like, in, in some ways, the beginning of the pandemic, it, it took a lot of energy to yeah. process the shock, mm -hmm. the, uh, su the surprise, the sorrow, the... You know, we all felt like we were plunged into Armageddon there for a while, and it just <laughs> seemed so, uh, so, so you're right. Uh, yeah, you're, you, I think a lot of us did that at some level or another, just distracted, yeah. because we couldn't process it all, and totally. maybe we didn't have the relationships or the people mm -hmm. or the relationship with God to process mm -hmm. it. So, right. Yeah. Um, and for me, I was just like, my prayers were not about woe is anything. Hmm. I was like, God, I need your help. Let's go. Let's go. It's always let's, it was always let's go. Instead, just push through. I, I learned this lesson a few months later. I need to sit. Just right. sit with God. Right. Uh, we even talked about this a few months ago. Um, prayer has that two side. Yeah. First yeah. of it is unraveling yourself. Yeah. I was, I was skipping the unraveling. <laughs> totally. Like God, I'm going to let my pack, my baggage be my baggage. Yep. And I'm not going to untangle in front of you, God. I'm just going to keep all this in. Yep. Um, and it led to a, a burnout in my life Yep. where I, I, I took some time off and I came back still tired. I, right. spent, I spent the next six months recovering from that. Right. Um, you know, luckily I had r wonderful people in my life um, praying for me and you giving me lots of advice. And I was yeah. able to learn so much from that season. Um, that was probably my strongest struggle with cynicism hmm. of will this ever be the same again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes uh, you think of a think of a place that's parched and dry, mm -hmm. and uh, the rain comes, and it's refreshing and life giving and so good, but uh, which which we we all love, right? Maybe we go through dry seasons and God renews us and it's so wonderful. But here's the question: What about when it's gotten so dry that even a rain doesn't really do much for you? Yeah. It just feels like, oh, well, it's just going to be dry again after the rain. Like, yeah. you know, thank God for the rain, mm. but, but I'm still dry. It's almost like it needs a prolonged season of mm -hmm. rain. You know, or you think of uh, leather that's been dried out and you have to put oil on it to get mm -hmm. it back to work again. Well, sometimes it takes a lot of reworking. and yeah. a long, So I, I guess what I'm getting after there is you, you need to examine your own soul at different seasons and, mm. and say, do I need a longer replenishing, a slower, long, a trickle charge, <laughs> mm. or do I just need a boost? Yeah. You know, and those are two different things for different seasons. Yeah. Oh man, absolutely. And so, you know, when I think of how, how do you get to cynicism, hmm. um, is I think a lot of times bad things will happen and we will close ourselves off to what's happening. Yeah. Um, and we re we won't tell a hopeful story yeah. about the events taking place. And, and that's, not, um, it's not a light thing. It's really hard to tell yourself um, a truthful story that is saturated in the hope that God has um, when things are going bad. Yeah. You know, through the pandemic, you know, you and I have seen so many people struggling with really hard things, hmm. um, losing loved ones and um, really struggling with heavy things. And yeah. not all of us have the strength to be able to step back and say, God, you are good and not distract ourselves. Right. Um, and so, yeah, when it comes to how you, people become cynical, I think that's a big piece of it. And another one um, is that we, we look at the Bible and we look at God, this is a good indicator, yep. is if you open the Bible and you think I've been here already. This is, hmm. when you look yep. at the Bible and there's no wonder yep. involved, when um, the God that you're reflecting on, you've already got him figured out. Yep. Um, I think uh, the tagline I've been going for myself this year is uh, let my heart be soft and let my God be wild. Right. Um, you, we don't have God figured out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you let God be mysterious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let, let God be an uncontained thing for you. Right. Um, and, you know, let my heart be soft. I'll take the good, the bad. 
Um, and when I, when I go before God, I'll go before God as, as this magnificent, big, holy God who loves me hmm. and radically forgives people and radically loves people and is scary in all the best ways. So I think sometimes losing our capacity for mystery, yeah. for awe, for mm. wonder, for beauty, yeah. um, those are all things that plunge us towards cynicism. Yeah. And regaining those mm. uh, is important. And, and whether that's nature, using God's creation, I think it's one of the great gifts mm. that enables us to experience awe again and wonder mm. and beauty again. Uh, or whether it's various art forms yeah. that uh, God has, has given us for those capacities. Anything that enables us to reach towards the heart, mm. um, to speak again languages of the heart mm -hmm. and uh, be connecting, at union, um, the beauty of fellowship, friendship, mm. um, marriage union, yeah. um, uh, parent-child union. Yeah. These are, these are, in human relationships, these are things that soften the heart, that yeah. enable a person to enter beauty again. Mm. Uh, and, and I think they're an important part of battling cynicism. Totally. Whenever we move away from those things, whether it's from fear of being hurt, yeah. whether it's from uh, just getting, becoming overly scientific. Hmm. Um, who, who's the guy who came up with evolution back in the day? Like Charles Darwin. Yeah, Darwin. Okay. Darwin, Darwin wrote a biography, autobiography, mostly for his own children. And uh, in it, he talks about becoming overly scientific and analytic in his life hmm. as one of his greatest regrets. Hmm. And he talks to his children. He says, by the end of my life, I've lost the ability to enjoy art, wow. to enjoy music, hmm. to enjoy these things. And he says, never do this. He, he encourages his children. He says, never lose your capacity for beauty, for wonder, yeah. for majesty, oh, for man. mystery. Yeah. He, he just got overly analytic. And uh, I think science can hmm. sometimes take you down the path of beauty and wonder. Totally. Um, and I mean, some of the greatest scientists go there, yeah. Christian or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think there's a danger, though. Mm. Uh, and you can do this in theology. You can do it in totally. any yeah, sphere yeah, yeah. where you can, you can allow your learning to take you down the path of wonder and awe. Mm. Or you can allow it to kind of make you... Uh, uh, Stochotic is the word I'm looking for. But the, just kind of... Uh, mathematic mm -hmm. and black and white and you lose that mystery and that joy man i remember my first year of bible college <laughs> yeah. i was so excited and wide-eyed and, yeah and yeah. um i remember my first year i'm in dorm i'm taking bible classes i'm all excited and um there were these uh end of their degree guys they were finishing up right in my same program yes and they were all very tired and cynical mm. It, they lost the wonder that they had. And it's the kind of shocking, isn't it? As it a was. first year, a first looking year. at these fourth mm -hmm. years and, and sort of anticipating and then going, oh, is that yeah. where I'm headed? <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I was definitely in my idealism stage. Right. And through the middle of my degree, I wrestled hard. Mm. Like I promised myself in that day I would not become that. Yes. Whatever that is, I yeah. don't want to become that. Yeah. Um, and then I, I went through the struggles and I... It hurt a lot mm. to, to have bad things happen, failing, all that stuff. Um, but being decided to be soft-hearted going into it um, and then coming out on the other end, I feel like realism. Yes. Um, at least more realism. Everyone's on a journey, but yeah. I remember even talking to you when I first got hired here at Victory Church. I, I talked about how the, 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 the cheese is real. <laughs> yeah, was yeah. My statement, yeah, I remember that. The that the gospel is real yep. and that it's good. Yeah. And that it goes into communities and transforms hearts, transforms lives. And I feel like when I got to that spot, um, if you had asked me at 18, uh, instead of whenever right. I got hired here, 20, 21, yeah. Yeah. Um, I went through some stuff that allowed me to say that with a much more honest, authentic confidence than I had when I started. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I mean... Um Okay, so just let me rephrase yeah. or explain your phrase because it's yeah. a funny phrase, right? Yep. The, cheese the cheese is, is real. real. So cheese meaning maybe uh, some of those Christian beliefs or sayings yeah. that sound cheesy, if yeah. you will. Cheesy stuff. If you throw it Cliches. out there, Jesus loves you. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, he yeah. died for you. Mm -hmm. um, it, whatever. You, you, uh, Christianity is a relationship with God. Right. Right. Yeah, um, they, they, they sound nice but mm. in some ways it's like yeah yeah whatever yeah i've heard it a million times right and yeah. then and then you looked at me early mm. on, on those early days yeah. when we knew each other and you were like for me i just want people to know the cheese is real yeah right? like yeah 
So, okay, just by way of explanation. That the Jesus loves you, like all those Sunday school things that you hear, they're more true than you'll know. Uh, they're way more true than, than the cliches give credit for. Um, that the gospel is, is, it goes so much further than that too. And how about... Um, they're not exaggerations. We, yeah, we long for the day when, when, when you hear that phrase, Jesus loves you, mm. it brings tears to your eyes. Yeah. You're just like, oh my goodness, that yeah. is... Right. Instead of like, oh, here we yeah, go again. whatever. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that when I look at cynicism versus uh, not even optimism, but hope. Yeah. Cynicism versus real hope. OK, so uh, if we were talking to new Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah we yeah. were saying, you know, here you're, you're going to head on your journey. You're going to face suffering. Mm-hmm. You're going to face some expectations that don't go the way you think they should. Yep. Uh, God is going to. Uh, surprise you in mm-hmm. some great ways, but also in some disappointing ways. Yeah, um, he is not going to be made after your liking. Mm-hmm. He's who he is, and so on and so on. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, and and as you learn and grow, there's there's going to be a temptation for you to enter a version of Christianity that says we are now mature. Right. And yeah. the, you know, you, you know, I know you're excited right now, but. Someday that'll all disappear and you'll just have a mature love that doesn't have any passion left, that doesn't have any excitement left, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we want to say back, don't let that happen. Don't right? let it happen. Through the suffering, through the disappointments, through the pain, through mm. the persevering, find ways to allow those things to actually push you towards mm. an increasingly soft and mm. worshipful and wondering and passionate yeah. heart. Oh, man. And I think one piece of that is that your relationship with Jesus hmm. is vital through it because in cynicism, yeah. you begin dwelling on the idea of God yes. rather than dwelling in the presence of in God. In the reality. Yes. Yeah. So the idea of God, you think, man, this, why don't you care? <laughs> right. Why do these bad things keep happening? Yeah. Um, you, know, I, you know, you start to believe lies. Yeah. You start to believe lies about, you know, well, maybe I'm too messed up or maybe you know, this, this, and that. And yeah. I, I think a key vital piece is that we sit in the presence of God yeah. and allow our God to be bigger than us yeah. and not believe the lie that uh, our idea of a cynical God is the real picture. Um, but when God is big, mm. when, when our God is wild, <laughs> so to speak, not like, not like reckless wild, but like wildly big, yeah. um, a big, terrifying, loving, magnificent God, um, when we sit in his presence long enough, the color will return to the picture that yes. seems gray and dim. Yeah. Um, life will be vibrant again. Yeah, I think keeping that sense of long-term hope is yeah. important because mm-hmm. I, I like what you said there. The color will return. Life will be vibrant. It's not like uh, we, we could say to the new Christian or the you know five-year, 10-year, 50-year Christian that it's always going to be bright and sunshiny days. Right. I mean, and there are going to be winters. There are going to be dark yeah. nights of the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but remembering that you're pressing towards this, this face-to-face, this union with God, this mm-hmm. uh, mystery and intimacy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think I struggled with a bit of it too um, because sometimes you meet people that are so hopeful hmm. and you don't realize... Uh, it's hard sometimes to understand them. So right. when I met you for the first time, yep. um, you know, early on, yep. I just thought, how can this guy be so hopeful all the time? Right. Like your disposition with, is so... Um, sure. Yep. You believe the best yes. about people yeah. and about <laughs> reality. And like, yeah. I, I at first thought, there's no way this guy's real. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way that's... How, how Are you just ignoring reality? What's the deal? Right. What's going on? Yeah. Um, and the longer I got to know you and got to observe the way you process things, it's like, no, this guy's, this guy's like more real than I am about things. Sure. Because I'm believing the worst of things. You know, my worst right. of days, I'm believing the worst about people. Right. Definition of cynicism is thinking people are self-serving and self-ambition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, where I've seen you look at hard, bad situations with people involved and say, no, nah, I'm going to believe the best about them and we're going to hope, for the, we're gonna hope yeah. that God brings restoration. Um, and I, I've seen you be right a lot more than I've seen you be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, There's going to be moments of disappointment on mm-hmm. either side of that spectrum. Yeah. But uh, biblical love 
is real clear, right? Yeah. Always believes the best. I mean, yeah. that is 1 Corinthians 13, yep. right? There's, we don't yep. really get a, a pass on that. No. So we choose to believe the best, knowing that sometimes we'll be disappointed. Yeah. Yep. But better than believing the worst and sometimes being disappointed, you know, the other way. <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Whew. That's challenging. <sighs> now, um, Chad from uh, King's Kaleidoscope yep. talked about his album. If you don't know who this is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but he, he talks about how he wishes that, you know, he's a Christian guy. He wishes that the kind of shows he put on, puts on as a musician, um, would be that that would bring the audience to a place where they would see Jesus and heaven and hell and right. God yeah. as, as majestic and as beautiful and as yeah. real as a five-year-old on Christmas morning running downstairs, <laughs> that, that sense of wonder there. Um, okay, he, so yeah. one of your last words in yeah. that phrasing was real. Real. And I, I think... That's so. That's been the word for me. That's been so helpful over mm. over the years of my faith journey. Is I want what is real to seem real to me, mm. or to be real to me. Yeah. Um, and there's days where it, it's it doesn't. It's not. You know, my heart isn't there. Yeah. But but that's I want what is real. Heaven and hell are real. Yeah. God is real. His mm-hmm. love is real. More real than I can possibly imagine. Mm. And so I, I want to increasingly open my heart to those realities yeah. and see them for what they are increasingly mm. and not be blind to them, you know. And, and, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So new Christian, you're going to have moments where you read a passage in the Bible and mm. you're just going to be so overtaken by its beauty. Yeah. You're going to read a passage, maybe Romans or something yeah. or... or in the Gospels or somewhere, you're going to read something and it's going to just come alive to you. Yeah. Write it all down. Mm. Write it all down. Don't forget the feeling. Yes. Um, there are going to be seasons where you don't have quite that feeling. Yeah. And you want to write it down so you can read about it. Yeah. And, and remember. Yeah. And be encouraged. Those days are to come still. You're going to have more Amen. moments like that. And the kingdom of heaven, you know, when we see Jesus face to face one day, it's going to be like that moment, but all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, when a passage jumps out to us about who he is, that's, that's but a glimpse of who he is. Yeah. You know, imagine being face to face with a God who loves us like that. Hmm. That's going to be amazing. So I love this topic. Yeah. And I, I yeah, uh, we can talk love, about it more. Yeah. But, you know, I, I do. I'm just trying to think of a couple closing words I have. I, I want to read you a quote. Yeah. Read me a quote. This is from Jonathan Edwards. Mm. Uh, he says this, and then I, I just have a couple words about it, but he says, there is no such intimate conversation between any other lovers as between Christ and the Christian. Hmm. Wow, eh? There is no such intimate conversation between any other lovers as between Christ and the Christian. Whew, hmm. that's, that's intense. And then Jonathan Edwards was the president of a university, right. one of the smartest minds, they say, that America yep. ever produced. But he knew how to go after intimacy with God. Hmm. So just one, one comment on all of this that, that I'm just feeling as we're talking um, is... Quite a few of my friends over the years have not been, say, they're, they're sort of manly men. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to engage emotion. They don't, don't have a lot of feelings. Yeah. I, I have one good buddy in particular I was thinking of who years ago I preached a sermon like just passion and emotion mm-hmm. and intensity. And you got to go after God and fall in love with Jesus. And he came to me after. He said, man, I, he grew up in charismatic circles where there was a lot of emotion, a lot of passion. Right. He was like, I want all of that. Yeah. I just don't get it. Like, yeah. I just don't feel feelings like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I would have a few things to say. One is you lean into God according to your wiring. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, another is, though, that maybe there's reasons why uh, an individual has been uh, handicapped in some of those areas through mm-hmm. their life and they need right. to get them broken open. You know, right. like it is good to experience emotion as a, as a full human being. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. learn how and you want to learn the language of the heart and how mm-hmm. to enter mystery. And some of that you might need to go for some counseling or get Absolutely. some help. Absolutely. I was going to say yeah. um, some cynicism is based on, um, you know, trauma in your past sure. or yeah. um, serious things that have happened to you. And the number one thing I want to tell you is to see a counselor, see a Christian sure. counselor that will yeah. help you walk through it. Um, I myself did counseling for the first Four, four months of this year yep. um, because of that burnout incident right. I had. I, I right. wanted to not just be um, functional. I wanted to be healthy. Yep. And a big piece of that was me sitting with somebody who's experienced yep. and diving into those areas of my past and areas of my exactly. life. How did I get like that? Yep. I don't want to be there again. 
Totally. Um, fighting cynicism can be as practical as seeing a counselor. Exactly. Yeah. So if a person's wrestling with that, wondering like, is there something broken with me? Is there something wrong with me? Well, sometimes yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and work on it. Give mm -hmm. yourself lots of grace. Lots of grace. And work on it. Invite others into the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and and you, you grow through life in this stuff. And mm -hmm. realize, again, we're not all wired the same. We don't right. have to copy each other's journey with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your own. Um, but there is an invitation towards love, towards mm. joy, towards mystery, right. towards beauty, mm. and, and towards fullness of life. Realism on the other side of cynicism, right? Mm -hmm. and, or maybe an idealistic realism, if you want, yeah. <laughs> on the other side. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, again, if you guys are really struggling, see a counselor, um, mm. reach out to one of us. We yes. would love to, to talk to you. And we have pastors, yeah. uh, associate pastors who love working with people. And so, Absolutely. Um, you know, if you'd like to talk about it, we'd love to talk to you about cynicism. Yes. Um, but yeah, we hope these podcasts find you well and are serving yeah. you well. And may God renew and just restore and revive our hearts and revive the hearts of people who are watching this today. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Have a great week, everybody. See ya when we see you.